Hi, this is Mick Elliott from Electronic Specifier Embedded World. I'm with Brian Carlson, who's the Global Sales Director, Automotive Processors for NXP Semiconductors. Brian, first of all, I know there's an exciting new product you've launched. Maybe just before we get to that, you could just talk about what automotive industry is looking for from microcontroller suppliers. Sure, yeah, and it's beyond microcontrollers. So that's the first thing I'll say. These are high-performance processors also. The key thing that's going on in automotive today is software-defined vehicles. And I'll show you an example of that later. And effectively, what we're doing now is getting rid of having a box for every vehicle function, a hardware-defined vehicle into a software-defined vehicle where those functions are now software. And I like to say it, today it's about putting a microcontroller into a box and shipping a box. Now it's about taking all those functions in boxes and putting them actually into a processor. And that's the exciting thing. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, I'll show it here. I'll show two demonstrations of how you develop software for those types of devices and how we support a complete STV architecture uh, on the second demo. Okay, now we're here in front of the software uh, a demonstration, so maybe you can talk us through what's going on here. So what we have here, there's two, I talk about two sides of the software-defined vehicle coin. The first side is what I'll show here is the software development aspect. So you have to develop software for a software-defined vehicle. Well, the interesting thing, as part of an STV, it really changes the way you develop software for a vehicle. The old way of doing it is to have a, a, a PC or a laptop, you're developing, you have a board connected. Well, that day is gone. Uh, you'll still do some of that, uh, but what's happening is automotive is moving where all the development is done in the cloud. And so you need to have a cloud access. All the tools need to be ported into the cloud. You want to develop on the cloud and then deploy it into the vehicle. And this isn't just a one-time thing. This is what's con continuous uh, improvement or integration, continuous deployment to the vehicle. So we're developing in the cloud, deploying it to the vehicle over time, incrementally adding new features, enhancements, new capabilities over time. So what we're showing here is what we call NXP Cloud Studio. NXP Cloud Studio brings all of this capability together in an environment in the cloud. Uh, as you look at how you develop software in the cloud, you have to code it, you have to build it, you have to test it, you have to deploy it to the vehicles and then monitor it. And what Cloud Studio is, is bring all of those together, integrate it into one flow, basically a development flow or DevOps flow, and we'll show that. So the first thing is I need to code. So I have software, SA2 Design Studio, which is a popular NXP software tool. It's the IDE for all of our software development. We've moved that to the cloud so people can develop in the cloud. So it's just like people are used to, they develop in the cloud, they can go through that whole process, write their code, uh, we can build it. So we go to the build, I can build it, so it goes through the whole build process. Again, this is all in the cloud. I want to test it, so I want to test it in the cloud. Well, in the cloud, we have virtual environments, the virtual prototype or digital twin of the processor. In fact, this is the processor we announced today, the SA2N55. We have that in the cloud, the virtual prototype of that in the cloud. So I'm now going to go into the Synopsys VDK, which is their virtualizer development kit, which allows people to develop their software and actually run through it. I can run that. I can bring up my uh, software. I can sit, do my configurations. I can run it. And once I run it, I can actually uh, debug it. I can test it. I can deploy it. I have a demo here through um, over the air updates. I can deploy it to the vehicle. Let me do that. Uh, Companion management, I want to select that to extend the range of my vehicle and send that over. So that's all there. And then finally, I want to monitor it. So I sent down into here, I increased the range of the vehicle. Uh -huh. this, so it actually does all the work in the, in the cloud. You debug it, you say you're happy with it, you deploy it to the vehicle. We actually deploy it, this would be in a vehicle, and it's running here. Now I want to monitor it. That's that last stage, the fifth stage. This is real time. This is actually running on this board. I can watch anywhere in the world on the cloud. I can watch what's going on with vehicle dynamics. I can understand the speed of the vehicle, the motor torque, all of that visually real time. I can see the location. This is the M City uh, test track in Detroit. Um, and so the beauty of this is end to end solution across the whole development cycle to the deployment and monitor in real time. So this is the, the software development side with the cloud. Uh, for software-defined vehicles, and NXP is providing that with our NXP uh, Cloud Studio. Oh, yeah. Hold on. NXP Cloud Studio, virtual development environment uh, for software-defined vehicles.
Okay, Brian, we're going to move over now. Yeah, we'll look at the hardware side of the equation now. How do we actually use it? How do we show the use cases of the SC2N device within the vehicle and how it provides personalization, uh, intelligence, uh, machine learning, and interfaces with the cloud? Okay, now here we are with a demo for the S32 Core Ride platform. Yes. Brian, talk us through it. Yeah, definitely. So we just announced the S32 Core Ride platform uh, back on March 28th. Uh, that's what's called, it's the SC2 core that allows, uh, the big challenge I would say for uh, automakers is how do I integrate all these functions? How do I consolidate all those boxes into a single chip? Or how do I consolidate within a zone or within a central computer? And what we do is actually provide the hardware built in with isolation capabilities to make it easy for them to take all these boxes and put it into a single, single chip. Um, we provide pre-integrated software with uh, uh, leading software partners to provide all of that enablement they focus, OEMs, automakers, tier ones, they focus on integrating the applications, the value add on top, the applications. And what we're gonna do here is show how we bring that all together, both from a hardware architectural point of view, looking inside the chip, I talked about bringing all those boxes into the chip, I'll show that, show how that can be used and the value of that. If there's a fault in one, we don't bring the whole vehicle down. That's a question we always get asked. We show how we, we support fault isolation and uh, freedom of interference, and then it'll show some of the use cases. At the end of the day, you know, technology is about enabling experiences. So it's not just about the technology, it's about how can I make life better? How can I my, my vehicle more exciting for consumers? So we'll show some of that also. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me start out on the demo. Uh, the first one I'm gonna talk about is personalization. Actually, let me start here and just show these two screens. This, this uh, S32 N55, we just announced it today. It's public. This device uh, is sampled to automakers today. Uh, so this, this is up and running. What I wanted to emphasize here is that this actually integrates multiple functions that in the past have been separate ECU, separate boxes across the car. So the whole idea is I can start to consolidate. I can remove boxes, which is weight, which is metal, which is a lot of cables to connect all those boxes into a single chip. And this is just showing that I'm doing chassis propulsion control, safety, power management, battery management, HVAC, body, over-the-air updates, and vehicle management. All of that in a single chip right here, instead of having multiple boxes all over the place with all the cables. So that's the first thing I want to show there to put this age. And then here is the cloud side. We can actually, much like the other, show uh, what's going on in this vehicle real time from a cloud perspective. So I can see the battery life, I can check the health of uh, the predictive maintenance of the HVAC or other systems with the car or the battery management or updates. So let me do the first one, uh, the personalization demo. So this is kind of a, a mock-up of what a screen would be, uh, like the infotainment would come and say, hey, there is a personalization software package available. Uh, do you want to purchase it? So I can go ahead and select here, purchase that. So what that does is upload. You can see all these lines, you mm -hmm. see the cloud lit up. That's yep. saying I'm getting all these packages downloaded uh, into the vehicle. Uh, it was complete. Okay, now I've set up this vehicle so it's personalized. And it's personalized depending on which driver. So if I take the first key fob here, mm -hmm. lay that down on there, you saw the lights change? Yeah. Yep. You saw all these green boxes That's change? Okay. Each of those green boxes were updated, were personalized for that driver, the driver two, which is this uh, eco driver. So we see up here the eco yep. driver. Yep. Note the range, 170 kilometers. They're gonna get 170 kilometers left on their vehicle at this point. Uh, there's also lights, the wheels are spinning, right? So the torque and how the performance, you know, it's an eco driver, so it's more, more efficient driving. Um, all of that is personalized. And the beauty of that is with a software defined vehicle, we can personalize everything about the vehicle, how the vehicle drives, how the vehicle rides, what's the ambient, uh, you know, the ambience around the whole vehicle. We can do the whole vehicle, and that's the beauty of STB. Now, if I take that off and say, I'm gonna be this other driver, right? Yeah. So this, this uh, is the sport driver. So the sport driver is a more aggressive driver. It adapts everything. They like the yellow lighting. You know, it's the yellow sports car, you know, sport driving. Uh, if you notice here, the range, it went down. It was 170, now it's 140. The tires are spinning at a much aggressive rate. The lights are actually a different pattern, brighter, right? This is a more aggressive, wants a more fancy uh, lighting uh, uh, mechanism here. So that's the personalization aspect of it. Um, so we're showing just through the fob, putting it, you know, whoever's in the car, it can adapt. 
what I wanted to show here though is that this is all based on NXP silicon. So this goes across the vehicle. So part of Core Ride is the ability to have optimized silicon platforms for the different parts of the vehicle, the end nodes, which are the smart actuators. So we have the S32K microcontrollers. These are the low end, low cost, very, very low power microcontrollers. They are great for smart actuation, sensing, these types of things. Uh, they're at the end, the end of the whole vehicle. Those tie into the zone controllers. So the S32K3 is ideal for the zone controllers because it has multiple processors that can do multiple cross domain functions within the zone. And the zone, the whole idea of zone is to get rid of boxes that were typically in that part of the vehicle, integrate those into one part within the vehicle, um, like say all the body functions, like uh, controlling the windows, the window locks, the lighting, the HVAC. We can get rid of a bunch of those boxes in the zone processor. So the S32K3 is good at that. And then the actual central compute, the central compute is where the new S32N family plays. And the first device is the S32N55, which is what's running here, which is running all of the overall vehicle management and, and can do vehicle functionality in the center of the car. So we're doing that. I'll show two more quick demos. This one's really important, safe fault recovery. So now we have all these boxes, all these vehicle functions running in there. So safe fault recovery, I can eject a fault. I ejected a fault into the HVAC. Right, you notice the fan uh, stop. Right, there's a fault. There's a red line indicating there's a fault in that path. It says that there's an error. I can I can get an update. There's an update available. So it's update from the cloud. You'll see this all start to come together. Fault cleared. You know there was an update that fixed the problem. Everything turned blue. It's all running. The fan is running now. So what we're showing here is if there's a fault within a vehicle, we can actually respond to the fault. And each of these have independent fault. We can determine faults anywhere in the vehicle and we can resolve a fault. We could reset it, we could do an over there update independently in each one of these, just like you would in a normal box. But all those boxes are in the processor. So we show the fault isolation. And the last thing I guess I'll show here is the last one is, is all of the, uh, the cloud data intelligence is that we can interface to the cloud and give the insights into the battery life, and et cetera. Uh, we have all the visualization in the cloud. So this is providing consolidation, it's providing data intelligence, and it's providing valued information, and it's allowing you to personalize the vehicle, control the vehicle from one central vehicle computer. So a lot going on. <laughs> on, 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 the, on the faults, you, 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 so they can be fixed over the air rather than the usual process of getting, getting a car fault. So. Yeah, so so two, I guess there's two aspects I like to say. So if there's a fault, it could be a transient fault for some reason, and that fault could be something that could be fixed with a reset. So typically it could reset very quick, right? We can boot these uh, in a matter of milliseconds. So there could be a fault. If it determines that it's a, a, a something that's going to be a fault again, then it, uh, it could put it in a fail-safe mode. Uh, but the nice thing about these processors are they support ASLD, but they, they uh, do it in a fault uh, I would say fail operational mode. So we could actually reserve uh, processing capability within it so you could actually move that function over to another processor and establish that that way. Or the final stage, I would say stages, if it has a bug in the software that needs to be fixed, then you could go to the over there update and over there update with a new update that fixes the problem. But the common denomina domin denominator, my mouth's dry, uh, is that this is done in an isolated way. Each one of these, which are all running different operating systems, you can see AutoSAR, Zephyr, et cetera, they're all independent, controlled, reset. Uh, you can uh, over there update them totally independently of all the others. And that's the magic of what this device is providing. Okay, and I guess the advantage for automotive makers is, as you say, less cabling, reduces weight of car. Yes, de definitely. We see numbers in 25 to 40 percent reduction. So, I mean, this is dramatic. And if you think about when I remo remove boxes, I remove cables, uh, that reduces weight, uh, which extends the range of the vehicle, which lowers the cost of the vehicle production, uh, which actually extends to manufacturing. Because some of these cables in the vehicles, they have to actually have humans do it. They can't have robots do them. Sometimes they have to bake them in an oven for a little bit to soften them okay. so they can bend the cables around the doors. Yeah. So now we're talking, we can do this with two wires, two wire ethernet, high speed ethernet across here and get rid of all the complexity and weight. So that provides so many advantages. Yeah.
And I guess this is just the start of the journey with the Supercore uh, Shortcore platform. Yeah, that's a great point. So this is just the, I always say, the tip of the iceberg, right? So we're seeing what can be done today. There's a whole roadmap of new capabilities. We just announced the SO2N family uh, on March 28th, and now a couple weeks later, we're showing the first processor, and we've already shown that there's uh, several others that are going to be coming uh, that even extend the capability more. So it's a pretty long runway for this technology and the capabilities. And the beauty of that is they're all software compatible, so the OEMs can actually, you know, uh, over time add more functionality or migrate to newer processors that are compatible. So the whole S32 family of processors supplies both scalability and integration capabilities with pre-integrated software, which really makes their integration, um, you know, the whole uh, you know, challenges that they have today, it breaks the barriers and allows them to not only develop for today, but have a path to the future. Brian Carson, thank you very much indeed. Great to see you again. Okay.